morning guys. Today I'm going to be talking about what is an executive creative director. I bet you're asking yourself, what's with this guy in all these black t-shirts? That story later. But now, coffee. Right, so you're going to have to excuse the noise, but some very inconsiderate neighbors that I've been waiting for all morning to maybe just pipe down a little, but uh, they haven't, and, but anyway, these things happen. I'm not sure if you've kind of ever asked, you know, what is an executive creative director? What does an executive creative director actually do? And so I thought I would explain it in this, this video. Every company is different. But this is my experience. An executive creative director, or ECD as they're commonly known, is the person that the creative directors report into. They're usually the most senior person on the creative team. There is a higher position, the chief creative officer for a, for a company. I'm not in traditional advertising. I've spent the last five years working in-house and building in-house design teams. I became an executive creative director was when I needed to start hiring creative directors that reported into me. It was the logical next step. In corporate environments though, creative directors and anything that has the title executive or director is quite a challenge to be recognized and even allowed to use. We fought hard for the position and ultimately, eventually, uh, HR allowed it. I did want to be um, the chief design officer, uh, but I got told that at that bank there was only one chief, and uh, clearly it wasn't me. <laughs> but yeah, let's start talking about some of the duties of a creative and executive creative director. Okay, the ECD is. Firstly, they are a creative director and they have the title executive prior to that because they are the face or the representative that gets in a room with ex other executives. And in the position that I've held, that was in a banking institution and it put me on the level with other executives. Um, still debatable if they ever really considered me an executive but I did go to board meetings I did present to the board I was part of the CEO's leadership forum so I certainly feel that I was at an executive level day-to-day -day interacting with various stakeholders at a very senior level of the business the responsibilities in your day-to-day -day include driving the vision, which I had to present to these various um, leadership forums, what we believed the vision um, of the design team was, where the products were going, what the work was that we were doing, where they were investing their money, what was the value to them, so it is quite a responsible job and not something I'm formally trained to do, but I was able to effectively communicate to these executives exactly what we do and the value we bring to the business. My day-to-day -day responsibility was to lead the design team and that meant that ultimately I took accountability for the design team and I was going to be the person that was going to motivate them and put the right structures in place and really roll up my sleeves and get the work that we needed to do done in whatever capacity I could contribute. Quite often that's just being an enabler. Something that I learned while I was in the bank was about servant leadership. It's, it's a way that you can empower the people that work for you to do their best work and put out the best product. 
one of the things that I've always done as a leader is every day I would sit and have coffee with my uh, credit directors. It wasn't a formal agenda. What we did was we comfortably just sat and we spoke and we brought up any issues we had to address and we dealt with any of the challenges they were facing so that I could help them where I could. There was just communicating what's going on so that I'm aware so that if, if I'm having any conversations with other people or if people come to me I'm aware of what's going on and I can address it and then wherever they needed me we would set it up that I could assist them in any way that I could. I was also part of a digital executive team which was about 20 of us we reported into the chief digital officer see double standards there they were allowed, there was allowed to be a chief digital officer not a chief design officer for some strange reason we did report into to him and he had this forum where we could all contribute to the direction of digital in the bank one of the big responsibilities that i had was making sure that there were enough resources on the team and the right resources on the team. So I was quite responsible for, I was responsible for recruitment. I used to interview most of the designers, be they UI, UX, whether they be copywriters, content creators, service designers, whatever it was, I would normally meet them. I would call for CVs, and I would get bunches of them. Also, the, the creative directors will have met with some people and said, you know, they need to meet me. And of course, we had a variety of consultancies that we worked with, which I also had to have that conversation and make sure that we were getting the right resources into the team. Another responsibility of the ECD is to strategize. And that I used to do with some of the business stakeholders and some of my creative directors to ensure that we had a plan for how we were going to move forward as a team, how we were going to move forward as an organization, and to make sure that we met the business needs and that it was also financially viable to have such a big design team. We had over a hundred designers at the bank and that's a huge responsibility and given that I at the very least employed half of those people personally myself there was a lot of responsibility on my shoulders. Something I hear a lot of lately is collaboration. And it was something for me that comes very naturally because my first 10 years I worked for myself and I always had to work with my clients and I worked quite directly with my clients. So I was quite comfortable to walk into any room and collaborate with other teams and people no matter what their position in the company or their specific skill set. I was very comfortable um, working with them. I'm not threatened by anybody. I'm not threatened by any sort of skill set. Uh, I'm quite well rounded and then I trust people and I'm very good at delegating and uh, sharing responsibility with other people. Operationalizing the team is a hugely important part of an ECD's job making sure that you have all the right resources at the right places, doing the right things with the right tools, design operations. Culture is not something that you can buy off the shelf. You can't force it, you can't anything. It's something that naturally happens, but you can influence it. So given that I came from a very creative environment and also a self-employed environment where I have that entrepreneurial spirit, I would influence the team in a certain way and influence the business to allow the creatives to be creatives, to create a culture where creativity can thrive and we don't get boxed into a stereotype, but get to be ourselves in what is quite a sterile environment that is a bank. One of the favorite parts of, of my job is that I get to nurture talent and I seem to have a knack for finding young talent and then being able to really guide them through their career and one give them a career path 
to follow, give them the right direction to temper their their talent and their moods and to be able to give them somebody to aspire to somebody that they can come to and trust and confide in because being a creative being a designer being a writer these are all really challenging disciplines and giving them that mentorship is one of my favorite parts of the job as the ECD I got to grow the team from a handful of people into over a hundred designers that worked across an organization that had multiple different skills and came from multiple different industries I was able to pull them together create a great environment for them to work create aspirations for their career give them great opportunities to use their talent to the best of their ability and I'm proud to have led such an amazing team and have been fortunate enough to be a leader to the leaders of the team and interact with such senior resources of a business I've learned so much and it's humbling to me to have landed up in the position that I was in and have such great responsibility. I still want the Chief Creative Officer or Chief Design Officer uh, title to my name at some point but uh, I'm quite privileged to have had the title of Executive Creative Director. I hope that fills you in a little bit more about what an Executive Creative Director is and what an Executive Creative does and I invite you to please you know ask me further questions I'm happy to cover this topic again and to answer your comments down below let me tell you about the black t-shirt situation something that you'll notice in my cupboard is that I basically have about 90% black t-shirts let's take a look over here we have a few grey t-shirts, that's like five, we've got a few white t-shirts and then all just black, white, grey t-shirts in my cupboard. Now the reason for this is that I find it really practical. Before I used to buy black t-shirts and I had a variety of black t-shirts and they'd all just have like a little label on the chest and I still have a few of those. But generally speaking, I just find them to be the neatest thing that you can wear in a work environment. They're practical because they don't get dirty, they don't show sweat stains, and they're relatively easy to find. It's, it's a staple in any wardrobe. In 2017, um, when I went to New York, I went to Uniqlo, I think that's how you say it, and they had these t-shirts that I'm wearing now for nine dollars and I just thought to myself like I've got these t-shirts that cost 20, 30, 40 dollars for a t-shirt that are branded with Adidas and Nike and I just thought like why like the quality of the t-shirt is exactly the same and at this price even if the quality fades I can always just buy more so I decided to just grab 10 t-shirts that's pretty much what I wear every day I don't feel a need to change up what I'm wearing all the time if I change anything it's the sneakers I'm wearing that day or the color of, of the pants I'm wearing or the hoodie but t-shirts just felt like something that I don't feel people pay enough ten attention to that I must now have this huge variety of t-shirts in my wardrobe. I've been back to New York since and I've, every time I do I go and buy another 10 of the same t-shirt and I've actually never bought another black t-shirt of any other kind ever since that date. Of course that's not my only uh, wardrobe quirk. More styling stuff coming soon. My name is Craig Jamison. Thanks for watching. Subscribe, like, leave a comment. Stay cool. Something I have decided to do is 
daily vlogging. Um, I'd put out a poll, most people had said I should just do weekly, but I just don't feel that it's enough. I have too many thoughts and too many things that I want to say and unfortunately if I leave them too long, I overthink them and I overcomplicate things. So based on my personality, based on the things that I want to say, uh, I'm moving over to the daily.